Yep, yep. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, thank you very much. Play one more to uh, break the tension.
so many times while playing, I've almost fallen down the stage. It's like, it's like I'm on water or something. How's it going, guys? So, my name is Nick Johnston. I traveled a very, very long way from the exotic land of Canada to be here. And it's very nice to be here. Although coming from Canadian winter, or summer to Australian winter, it's like, damn. It's like Canadian spring. <laughs> Anyway, so you're stuck with me for a little while, so I have no idea when I'll be back doing this again. So if anybody has a question about anything, whether it's the guitar, the tone, what I'm playing, what I'm thinking about when I'm playing, what I had for breakfast, like you name it, whatever you want to talk about, we, we'll do it. So anybody have a question? First, oh, I didn't have to coax you. What's up, buddy? Oh, this is going to be tough. I, you may have to yell at me. Okay, cool. I think I heard you right. What am I thinking in terms of harmony when I'm improvising or what, like within the music? <clears throat> Band, so it's a question of who I'm influenced by? Who am I influenced Well, I'd have to, it changes all the time. To see what I've been listening to, I'd have to look at my, my phone, Apple Music, I've got all sorts of crap on there. Lately, um, what, let me check. <laughs> So I discovered this album recently by a, a, a young guy from Chicago named Ruben Gingrich. It's an album called Blue Island. It's a jazz record. You should check that out. Really cool harmony, cool playing. Um, I've got some Yes on there. I've got some Frank Sinatra. <laughs> got some Billy Joel. I've got some Opeth on there. I've got a band from the UK called The Pineapple Thief on there. Got a lot of Bernard Herrmann, who was the uh, did a lot of the scores for Alfred Hitchcock. I mean, all sorts of crap. It, it as long as, I mean, as long as it's it's such a general thing, but it's well written. I'll listen to it, you know. Uh, but a melody first. That's how I typically think. Yeah. Uh, guitar players. I mean, I've been a fan of the same guitar players since I started playing guitar. Like you know Jeff Beck and Ingve, Steve Ray Vaughan and Eddie Van Halen. And uh, actually, I met one of my all-time guitar heroes here. Yesterday, a guy named Brett Gar said, my God, that guy. I told him a funny story. He didn't remember who I was, but many years ago, I was about 16. I'm 30 now. 16 years old. I sent, I, well, he, had, he used to have his, his address on his website, his home address, for some reason. Uh, and I sent him a demo CD of some really terrible music I was working on. And he emailed me back. I had my email on the CD. He's like, yeah, just you know, keep, keep doing what you're doing. It's great. Which, you know, to him was probably like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I told him that, and he was just like, oh my god, that's the most amazing thing I've ever heard. So, uh, yeah, I've liked the same dudes for 15 years, you know, really. <laughs> but as long as it's well written and there's a pretty cool melody, I'm, I'm all in. Yeah. Cool. Right on. Anybody else? Follow up on that or something different? You, sir. Composition. Okay. Talk about that. So, um, when I was when I was about 18 years old, I, I had been writing a lot of really terrible, like super technical instrumental music. I was really into for a little while that 80s shrapnel record. Do you guys know that stuff? Like, like all the Mike Barney releases, like uh, Finny Moore and uh, some of the Greg Howe stuff, Jason Becker, like all that stuff. I was really into that for a while. But I, I noticed when I would try and write it, it was just just vomit. It was just awful, noodly stuff that had no direction. And I had a friend who was doing similar, something similar with instrumental music that I'm doing now. He was releasing albums and he was touring and stuff. And he gave me a project. He said, I want you to come back tomorrow with a song, a brand new song with no guitar solo in it. And I was like, what? What do you mean instrumental song with no guitar solo? Like, the song is black and white and then the solo comes in and it turns to color. Like that's just the way things go. You know? <laughs> um, and I did it and it completely changed the way I thought about writing music. You don't, I mean, the guitar solo is awesome, and I love doing it. But it's the last thing I think about. The first thing I think about is the melody. Um, in fact, you, you take any of those two songs I just played. Let's, let's take the last one I played, a song called Atomic Mind. And the melody in that song is hilarious. It goes like this. So if I play that faster, like anywhere else in the neck, 
sound like this. It was just like a child's recorder melody or something. I can play with my thumb. Let's see if I can do that. Kinda. So anyways, the point is it's not a difficult thing to play. You could play it on any instrument. You could sing it. You could play it on a piano. You could play it on a violin. Whatever. The trick and the thing I'm always thinking about is the harmony. So what's actually going behind that to make it seem like it's got more going on? So um, that's in B. I'm tuned down a half step, but that's in B minor. And what I would think about when I have a melody like that is what what do I want to put behind it? What's the harmony going to be? And I I know enough theory to where I could know. Okay, these are the chords that are in that key. Why don't I just completely break that rule, right? And then I start messing around with the harmony until I find something I'm quite happy with. Um, <clears throat> like it could have been, for example. <sighs> There's not enough weight to that. So basically, let's say we have that, that kind of key note I'm landing on. It's a D note. And let's just go through a bunch of different chords. So it could have been the minor third. Could have been a uh, major second. something harmonically that's working with that pitch. Ultimately, it was just uh, just a B flat. Which, I mean, there's a, there's a little bit more to it, but to, I don't want to get it. We, we'd need hours, people. We'd need hours. So basically, it's just a matter of what is that pitch, and what is the chord, and what's the harmony I'm getting. That plus that and that. <laughs> and I mean, that goes for everything. The first song I played, that melody is... could have been or ultimately it was um, what was it? it was I think it was a B flat so I'm just thinking of that one pitch as it's a separate entity that anything can kind of work with and does it does it fit does it feel good and that's, that's, for me, that's the most fun in the whole process. It's like sitting down and what's the harmony going to be? And then when you feel like you got something, you just, you don't question it, you just roll with it. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the whole approach. You know, I just, I, when I'm home from a tour, I go into my little home studio and I just close the door and it's like hours. I'll just sit there, and just shut the universe out, turn the computer off, th throw my phone out the window and just play guitar and do that, you know? It's a lot of fun. Just try it. <laughs> cool. All right, anybody else have one? You, sir. Living or dead? Man, that's such a tough question. You put me on the spot here. Um, I would love, I mean, it would never happen, but I would love to play with the guys from Rush. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'd love to have Neil Peart playing something, but that would probably never happen. So, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. That's a great question. I'd have to really think about it. I had a wonderful opportunity to make a record with Gavin Harrison, who plays with uh, King Crimson now. He's awesome. I would like to actually get to play with him. We just did the whole online track trade thing that's you know, a, you know possible nowadays. But that would be another one. Uh, I'd love to do something with another Canadian, Devin Townsend. That'd be very cool as well. Um, yeah, the list goes on. Yeah, cool. How about you? Who'd you play with? Yeah, exactly. It's tough, right? I'm not good enough, he says. I'm not good enough to play with Gavin Harrison. Nobody is, but we, we certainly try. <laughs> uh, one more, then I'll play some more music. Yeah. Oh, man, I got a story for you. Okay, so. Yeah, you see me kind of clawing the guitar like an animal, just like trying. So all I'm, by the way, all I'm doing is just, for those of you who don't know what, he, what he's asking, um, instead of having a bar in here, I'm just kind of grabbing the bridge. It's pretty 
flush, so I can't get a pitch uh, to raise, but I can get it to go down. <laughs> um, so when I was I was 17, I saved up enough money for about two years, uh, and I bought a Carvin guitar. It was a DC 127C, and it had everything on it. Like it had everything on it. I had the. It was so ugly. Um, I got every option on it, and I had the phase switcher and the pick, you know, the active thing and the cappuccino maker, like everything on it. And like, it was just the worst guitar. But uh, it had the bar, and I could do like a lot of the Jason Becker stuff and the Eddie Van Halen stuff. But the more. And when I was playing with friends, I would I would do everything with the bar. For example, I'd, I'd go, uh, or I'd go like. Uh, and after a while, they're like, "That is horrible. You sound bad." And when your friend tells you that, I mean, they like, they mean it. Like, they really mean it. So I sold the guitar because I agreed with them. I had, I had been recording myself for a while and I, I listened back and I just developed this horrendous habit of using the bar for everything. And I hated the way I sounded when I played guitar. So I sold it and I bought a Telecaster, which in every way was different from that. It was just a, you know, a board with strings on it. So it was like totally different. I had to relearn how to play. And then a few years later, a friend of mine, the same friend actually bought a, a Stratocaster, a custom shop Strat. And it was this beautiful guitar. And I remember he played a chord, and he just, he just went like that. I was like, what are you doing? What the hell are you doing? And ever since, I mean, this was, we were 20, I think, so I saw him do that, and I was like, oh, that's what I'm going to start doing. It's kind of a good medium, kind of like middle-of-the-road solution to that addiction I had. And I know what would happen. If the bar was back on, man, it, it would be all over. It would just be like constantly using it. I mean, I love Jeff Beck, the way he does that. With the, I could never do that way, because it's just, he's an animal. But uh, I just needed a little, just for like a little bit of character, you know, kind of, it's cool just to be able to do that crap. It's just kind of fun. But uh, yeah, it was just, uh, you know, whammy bars, anonymous. I was addicted to it. <laughs> cool? All right. Okay, I'm going to play another song for you guys. Cool?
Thank you very much. I think I bent that string way, way, way too hard. So, anybody got a question? But anything at all? You, sir. You, yes. <laughs> Great question. So that that's, that last song I just played, basically the chord progression there is uh, A minor, G, still a tune. So that D chord poses a problem if you're playing just purely in A minor, because it has an F sharp in it. So you're basically switching from, I'm switching from anyways, either A natural minor, A harmonic minor, A melodic minor, to A Dorian, which has that. It has a bunch of different color in it. So I think ab about that when the chord is coming along, but for the most part, it's completely just f play, just phrasing. And I've done, I've done this type of thing so much now where I think the worst thing you can do is think. I've, I've learned, you just, just play, and if you make a mistake, you make a mistake. But uh, if I was to, s to stop and break everything down and tell you what's going on, I could, I could be like, well, over this side, like Phrygian, and then I that. which is great to be able to talk about and say, but it, it, it doesn't. When you're up here and you're in front of, let's say, 150 people or 2,000 people, you're just playing. You, you don't have time to think. You just got to follow your ear and your gut and experience. And the main thing is like being okay with Messing up, <laughs> yeah. But if I'm if I'm gonna be in the studio and I have more time, then I I might think like that first song I played. That's I always. Oh man, I get bombed out when I have to play over that solo section because every chord. I mean, you get a chord like this, like a C minor major seven with a six in it. And there's not a lot of stuff you can play on that, right? So I'm playing like E minor to. Uh, minor and you have to think I mean that's to, to hear this chord and hear a line like it's kind of hard you have to know what those notes are so it's in that kind of situation it's a little bit more and that uh, second part going G to F sharp to F. And that's three different keys that's G major then F sharp uh, Phrygian dominant then F Lydian so there I'm like hmm, how can I Blend those three things. I started working with Schechter. I guess I'm here on behalf of Schechter. I haven't mentioned them once. <laughs> Thank you, Schechter. <laughs> uh, when they asked me to, to kind of... So a guy, a Schechter artist, a guy named Jeff Loomis. You guys know Jeff Loomis? He started playing guitar with Arch Enemy, and he was doing a lot of clinics for Schechter, and they didn't have a guy anymore to, to do clinics. So they're like, Nick, you're doing some stuff. Why don't you come along and let's see what happens? And then it just kind of kept steamrolling from there and there. It was real tough at first because this, I'm sure you guys can imagine, like just going up in front of a room full of people that you don't know, um, especially when you say things like about and out, you know, they, they always get made fun of. Uh, <laughs> it's tricky, but you just have to kind of persevere. The success story. Um, still, I, I don't know, it's, it's a weird thing. Like I don't think of myself as a musician, I just think of myself as a guy who's just like trying shit seeing what happens because because I think it's such a volatile industry that I'm just like see what happens we'll just kind of roll with it and I happen to be able to do it all over the world which is cool so I'm just very thankful for that anyways guys thank you so much for coming to this I really appreciate it um, I'm doing a couple of guitar clinics across the beautiful country I don't no, exact. Where are they again? Sydney and Brisbane. So if any of you are from there, please come to the clinic and we can talk more. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Take care.